Greetings, test takers. This is Dean Timmy. I'm coming to you from my studio here in fabulous Las Vegas. I just uh, finished uh, doing a couple lectures for Series 24 and Series 57. And I got to thinking, um, worthwhile to put a little something up for USIE test takers, U Series 7 test takers, and you 65s about knowing your bid and your ask whose perspective. And since I already was in that kind of mode, I thought I'd real quickly uh, throw something up on that for you. So here we go. So let's just uh, go over this. The Bid the ask here is from the market maker's perspective. So as you can see here, uh, I have three market makers, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, and Merrill Lynch. Those are called their MPIDs, their market participant ID, kind of like a vanity license plate. And uh, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, and Merrill, we can actually see this. And it's a NASDAQ security. As you can see here, I told you in the left-hand corner of the slide, this is indeed XYZ, this market center is NASDAQ. And what you have to be prepared to do on the SIE, the Series 7 and the 65 is be able to look at Morgan Stanley's quote, for example, and say, you understand that Morgan Stanley is willing to buy 10 round lots into their inventory, 10 round lots, round lots 100 shares. So 1,000 shares in their inventory at 15 and sell 1,000 shares out of their inventory at 1515. I highly recommend that you, uh, to get comfortable, might want to, when you see kind of an exhibit like I've got here, is maybe above that say, okay, this is the price at which the market maker buys. Into inventory. the bid, and this is the price at which the market maker uh, sells out of inventory. So, you know, that's called here. This is called, let me just get a different color here. This is referred to as the market makers markdown. And this is referred to as it looks like I'm missing a T there. This is consider considered to be the mark up. You know, from the uh, customer's perspective, from the customer's perspective, the uh, bid is the price at which the customer sells. Whenever customer is looking at two prices, the customer always receives a low price. It always pays the high price. What's that called? The securities industry. That's how we make our living in the securities industry. The difference between what we buy and sell at. Now, I kind of think of it as like a car uh, dealer, right? You go into a Nav Lincoln Navigator dealer and say, how much for a Lincoln Navigator? Uh, he says, uh, 90 grand, you go, God, I'm great, great, I've got one, where's my 90 grand? He's gonna say, well, Dean, I misunderstood you. I thought you were trying to turn a uh, money into a navigator. Now I understand you wanna turn a navigator into money, 40 grand. I said, what's that called? That's called the spread. The difference between the bid and the ask, that's very testable, is called the spread. And in this example, uh, just to make it uh, match up here, the customer is selling into the broker dealer's inventory, the market maker's inventory. And the customer is buying out of the inventory. And you know what market makers do is like provide liquidity. I'm willing to uh, turn money into securities or securities into money, whatever you'd like. Now, as I said, you have to be able to look on your exam 
and see here, for example, that Goldman Sachs is willing to buy eight brown lots into its inventory at 1502, and Goldman Sachs, GSEO, is willing to sell 900 shares out of its inventory at 1516. Now, if you work in an order entry firm, an order entry firm, that's a, a broker dealer that does not have securities in inventory. That'd be like, uh, you know, Robin Hood or Schwab or TD Ameritrade or Fidelity. And if you work at the order entry firm, you actually need to see which of these market makers uh, have which quote, because you need to know who to call to do business with or contact, so to speak. And if you can actually see these market makers, you have what's called level two NASDAQ service. Now, I don't think you're gonna to have to go that deep on the SIE, but uh, on the 67, uh, probably should have a good uh, kind of an understanding of that. And uh, 65, I don't think you have to go that deep as well. Now, uh, these market makers here need to be able to change their quotes. And so market makers will subscribe to a level three NASDAQ data feed. That actually, actually lets them go in there and change their quotes. Now, if you're not a participant, if you're not an order entry firm, you're not a market maker, what you would be most interested in knowing is what is the inside market or the inside quote. And so here, the inside quote, we know the customer when he sells, by the way, is gonna get the low price, but the customer would want to receive the highest of the low price and wants to pay the lowest of the high prices. And so based on this exhibit, we're looking, we have our exhibit here. If we had level one, that's like what's on my smartphone. Like it would show me what's called the inside quote or inside market. And that would be in this example, 1503. Oh, let me get a bigger font. Fifteen. And let me get a different color. Fifteen oh three. Uh, Fifteen fifteen. And then the size of the quote is how much is available. Now, the, all these market makers test question have to be able to uh, have a two sided quote. They have to maintain at least uh, the willingness to buy or sell around lot a hundred shares. And if I'm displaying size, I don't honor size. That's a big no no. So sometimes on your exam, they'll say a market maker fails to honor a firm quote. This is a prohibited practice, is a prohibited practice, and is known as And that's known as selling away. So that's a big, big no. That's when a market maker fails to honor a firm quote. And if I fail to honor a firm quote, excuse me, not selling away, you need some more coffee, backing away. And if I'm backing away, you say, Dean, are you backing away from your quote? I say, what are you going to do about it? And you say, well, Dean, uh, I'm going to contact uh, uh, FINRA's Department of Enforcement. And the offender will call me and say, Dean, we've had uh, reports that you as a market maker are failing to honor your firm quotes. Uh, we also want to know the size here. And so the size of the quote right now is, let's go smaller font, make it match up. And let's say the uh, size right now, we've got 700 shares on the bid and we got 1,000 shares on the ass. So that's going to be seven by 10. And that's what... Uh, level uh, one NASDAQ data feed would be showing. So by way of review, know your bid from your ass, or oh, I'm sorry, your ask. <laughs> know your bid from your ask. We said, I'm gonna put this in the SIE playlist. I'm gonna put this in the series seven playlist. I'm gonna put this in the 65 playlist. I just gave you an example of a, a display, a level two NASDAQ display. We well, had three market makers willing to buy or sell, provide liquidity in the security. And what we got to know is, given this quote, you know, right now we're looking at the inside quote. I'd be able to tell my customer is uh, looks like you can sell up to 700 shares at 1503. Remember, customer gets a low price, and Mr. Customer, it looks like you can buy a thousand shares at 1515. He said, "Well, Gene, what's uh, what's after that?" I go, "I don't know. I just have a little one Nasdaq data feed. That's all I can tell you." 
If I had the level two NASDAQ data feed, I could actually tell you which market makers have which quotes. And if I had a level three uh, NASDAQ data feed, I could actually participate. Okay, so I hope you have found that helpful. Smash that like button. And uh, I'm trying to put up more of these little uh, ditties for you uh, in the playlist. So uh, let me know whether you like these little ones, you like the longer ones. We got all, we got, this is five, 10 minutes. I don't know. We got hours, <laughs> we got all kinds of it. i uh, see you for the next installment. Bye-bye.